vehicle. Go down to the lottery store since I'm on the way to the dump and cash in my winnings, which consisted of very little. Let's see, we had, there's my wife's two scratch off tickets. She had, she got the 11 number, so she gets a free ticket for, because there's an 11 on here. And on here, she got the 8, which is worth $3. On Mega Millions the other night, I had seven chances. These two were quick picks, but one of the winning numbers was a five on the Powerball, and you can see I got I got a five on both tickets. So these two here are probably worth a couple of dollars. And whatever I get for them, I'm gonna buy, somebody already won the Mega Millions, so I guess I'll get a couple Powerball tickets or at least one, depending on how much I win. On um, just a quick pick. I'll keep trying. You gotta play if you wanna win. Two dollars. Two dollars. Did uh, well, I'm leaving the dump area. As you just saw, I got my little quick picks for the next Powerball. The lottery's still up pretty high on that, the jackpot. I don't waste much time on them little chump change mega ball they got this month. This time, I mean. But I thought I'd spend a few minutes here and tell you a story real quick. The lottery. God, I'm gonna get me some new windshield wipers. I better turn those squeaky things off. Um, the lottery is definitely gambling in, in its purest form. And in regards to that, I'll tell you a story about my father when he was still alive. Uh, this was 20, 25, 30 years ago. Lottery was big up north. I think New Hampshire or somewhere like that. He was playing the lottery tickets. He would buy his tickets by mail and have them sent down here. Well, at one point in the lottery game, there he won three thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. I don't remember what it was. He won a pretty good little chunk of change. And after that, he was hooked. I saw on the news how people spend their whole paycheck just about to buy these lottery tickets and that's when you're really hooked and hooked is what my old man got he uh he was spending a lot more than anybody knew on them lottery tickets and uh, he was buying scratch off stuff to yin yang that's where you scratch off and take a chance on winning a few bucks and he was looking for the big win again once you got that three thousand dollars or five thousand whatever it was like bait on a hook it just sucked you right in and he was addicted but he went off up there in Tennessee somewhere and had a stroke he was driving down the highway and didn't even know where he was he wound up in a hospital up there when he got pulled over by the police he had it resulted in a he had a tumor on his brain he had to wind up getting surgery but that's neither here nor there in regards to this story. Um, they had him lined up for surgery and I, he, he didn't want to have it done up there. He wanted to go home to Georgia to do it. So Since he couldn't drive, a cousin of mine went up there with me and drove my car back and I drove him back to uh, Georgia, taking him to one of the hospitals here in Atlanta. Well, on the way down the road, he, he's sitting over there in the passenger side. Stop up here at this gas station, this next exit. We were on one of the interstates. I wanted to get me some lottery tickets, so I figured I'd, I'd pamper him and let him do that. Pulled in this quick gas station type thing. He got $30, $40 worth of tickets of scratch-offs. I had to sit there. I said, we need to get on down the road. No way, I gotta scratch these tickets. So he scratched off each ticket, slow as moody's goose, and they're sitting there for an hour and a half. He 
finally got them all scratched off. Then I had to go in the store and get his winners. There was a few. He won like $20, $30 or something. But he had much more than that tied up in the operation. Wait a minute, I want to scratch you. He said, no, we're going to Georgia, old man. I got to put the car in gear. We're going down the road while he's scratching the rest of his tickets. We didn't get but about 50 miles down the road. He wanted to stop again. I said, no, sir. Um, we're getting you on down to the hospital. You played your games enough. We'll, I'll cash your winners in for you later. We're going to Georgia. But he would have never got home if he was driving himself. He'd be going from one exit to the nearest next one. It's amazing how that gambling fever hooks some people. He definitely had him a grip on him. You know, it's all untold hundreds of dollars he spent trying to win the lottery again. He spent much more than he ever won in that little pot he won. There's always that slim hope that you'll win the big one. So we all go out there and take a few chances on winning that big old lottery. But as you see in my drawing, I did probably better than most. I won four dollars the first time on a Mega Millions. Then when I went back and bought more, which I just cashed in today, I won four dollars on two separate tickets of two dollars. So all total, I've got I've won about eight dollars. But you got to figure I spent. 40 buying those t chances. So I still came out 12 bucks in the hole. But I've still got my finger crossed. Somebody said, how do you cross one finger? I think it was old Doc down there in Jacksonville. Said, well, you just take a pair of pliers and make it cross. Anywho, I haven't gave up. I'll still keep trying occasionally and until I get broken and next payday I'll go down there and probably spend another 40 bucks. To my friend up there in South Carolina, don't forget me buddy. I know you remember me. Your friend down here in Georgia. There's my quick picks for the next Powerball drawing, which is up to 750 million. So I still got a couple of chances to win, but my hopes are slowly dwindling. As long as you got a ticket, you still have hope. Do you have any hope today? In other words, did you get any tickets yet? Anyway, cross your fingers. This is Pete Walpar signing off.